Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the fourth webinar in our webinar series, COVID Stir Crazy, Engaging Students in an Ever-Changing and Disconnected World. My name is Scott Lang, and I couldn't be more excited to see you here today. It's a Friday morning. The sun is out. Well, it is out for me, and, and one of the blessings I have is I live in Phoenix, Arizona, where the weather is 75 degrees and sunny, and uh, couldn't be a better time of year to to be at home and spend some time with the family. And as we begin this webinar, I just wanna take a moment and just count our blessings. Uh, if you're happy out there, if you're healthy out there, if you're staying safe out there, then this is not the world's worst time. And there have been far worse times and we're gonna get through this uh, together and we're gonna get better together. And that's what today's seminar is about. Now, just a couple things. There's some housekeeping issues. Number one, this webinar is being recorded. And if you RSVP'd, uh, you will get a link to the recording as well as a professional development certificate later on this afternoon or early tomorrow. Also, um, this will be posted inside the band app um, in which you'll be able to watch this and go back and review it and share it with your friends and colleagues when this is all done. We also want to let you know that we will be interacting live on the chat board at the end of the presentation. Uh, we won't be doing it, I won't be doing it during the presentation, but you'll be able to interact with the over 2,000 people that have RSVP'd to join this webinar um, in real time in the band app. And then finally, we want to thank our friends at the band app. Um, the Zoom platform has been a wonderful platform for us. And I'm sure many of you are using it, but it's challenging in that uh, for the size webinars that we've been having, it got expensive. And Zoom, uh, band stepped up to the plate and stated that they would provide the solution absolutely free of charge as a part of their incredible service. And we hope that when you're done with this, you'll take a few minutes and check out the band app. Believe it or not, it is an incredibly powerful communication tool that's not meant for band, that just happens to be their name. It's meant for sports teams, churches, families, schools, student councils, and anyone else that needs to connect in this ever disconnected world. So welcome to COVID Stir Crazy. And if you've not gotten a little stir crazy, um, it will hit you soon. We're in day 33 here in Arizona, and I've only had two bad days. Um, two bad days. Uh, one day, just it got to me, and uh, luckily, my son's piano teacher um, is uh, also a hair cutter. So after she uh, gave my son a piano lesson, she cut my hair, and that was life changing for me. I felt like a new man. And the other day, I just got funky, and I just put everything away and went outside and played catch with my son. But other than those two days, uh, we're doing okay. Prior to beginning, we do want to let you know that the slide deck is available at joinsll.com. You're going to want to download that because you're gonna to wanna to be able to take notes in real time as we share a ton of information for you. So let's get started. It's time to talk about going crazy in a COVID world. So the Chinese word for crisis contains two characters. One of the characters signifies the word danger and the other character signifies the word opportunity. And that's the two paradigms that I want you to think about this as we go through this actual, not just presentation, but you go through this exercise, is we can't control what's happening to us. It certainly is, is a systemic and worldwide pandemic that is altering virtually everyone's way of life, thinking, operating, and living. But what we can do is control how we respond to it. And with every crisis represents an opportunity. And that opportunity is a chance to learn a new skill, um, to teach our students something new and teach them in a new way. And I'm coming from the frame of mindset that this isn't about um, just how do we survive this? That's the wrong mindset. I'm coming at this from the mindset, how do we thrive? in this mindset. And our previous three webinars have talked about how to grow our programs, how to grow our skill sets, how to grow our ensembles in these times. So for the next 50 minutes that we're together, I want you to move from the first character of the Chinese uh, characters, which signifies danger. I want you to move away from that. And I want you to only focus on the second character, which is an opportunity. What are the opportunities that we have that are associated with this global pandemic? How can we move our skill sets forward? How can we move move our students forward, and how can we move ourselves and our programs forward. Now, understanding this, that this is a brave new world, and, and a lot of you aren't comfortable, we're going to give you 
practical tactical solutions that you can implement in real time. And that's my theory in all my webinars and all my uh, solutions that we provide you is we want to present real solutions to real problems in real times. When you're done, you should be able to put some materials together and be online inside of 30 minutes. And I'm not kidding. And I'm going to show you why I chose that time frame in 30 minutes or less. And if you're going to have some fun, it's not just about about um, well, I've got to do this because my school says. You know, when I do my leadership applications with my kids, the first you know time I did it, the kids were like, oh my god, this application is so much work. And my oh, my only response back to them was, yeah, but if you're not having fun doing it, you're doing it wrong. So think, rethink the way you're doing it. If you're not having fun writing this curricula, if you're not having fun teaching online, then you're doing it wrong. And we're going to teach you today how to do it right. It's as simple as one, two, three. One. What is your purpose? Why are you doing this? Number two, preparation. What do you need to do to get ready to go online? How, what do you need to have in order to effectively communicate and engage and educate in an online world? And then three, how do you present it and how do you celebrate afterwards? Easy is one, two, three, purpose, preparation, presentation, and celebration. So in order to think about what we want to do, we have to start with our purpose. But in order to start with our purpose, we have to think about the frame of mind of the end user that's joining us. So think about this. This is a real quote from a real neighbor three nights ago. Um, every, uh, every two or three nights, we engage in social distancing, but we do it in a movie night. Uh, we open up our, we put our garage door out, we get a home projection system that one of my business buddies has, and we get some outdoor speakers and we show movies. And every Sunday is a movie for the kids and every Thursday is a movie for the adults. So last night was Rocket Man. Oh my goodness, if you haven't seen that, go see Rocket Man. But it was just a great way to hang out and be with our friends, but not be close and, and sharing that experience and get out of the house. Sunday night, we were showing a movie and uh, I overheard one of my best friends on the planet, who, by the way, was a teacher, an elementary school teacher for years, um, is an incredibly brilliant woman and skilled and a great mom. They were talking about all the work that's coming home for her three kids and not thinking through what I do for a living and that I'm a music teacher, I overheard her say, I swear to God, if one of these special teachers sends home more homework, I'm going to lose my mind. And it really resonated with me as I watched my own wife and, and she's teaching uh, my fourth grader at home. Now, my high school is a different ball game. We're gonna talk about the difference between teaching in an online world for a high schooler and an elementary school and a middle schooler. We just look at my older son and say, hey, Braden, go do your homework. You got it done? Yeah. What are your grades? I'm getting A's. Good job, buddy. My nine-year-old, who's a fourth grader, it's a battle. It's a, it's a daily struggle. And we just have one of those. We have two kids, but only one of them we have to really work at homeschooling. If I had, she has three kids, two of which she's really having to work at homeschooling. She has a first grader and she has a sixth grader. And she's now become a cook, a professional chef, three meals a day, every meal at home, a professional cleaner trying to keep the house sanitized, a professional healthcare worker trying to um, keep her family happy, healthy, safety, a professional mom, and now a professional teacher. She's losing her mind. And that's the, the framework that's happening at home. And then on top of that, many of these parents are single parents who are also trying to keep their jobs afloat or dealing with the stress of being laid off, being furloughed that we have to understand that if we're not adding value to the home, then we're adding problems to the home. Now, hear what I just said. In this online world, if we're not adding value to that home, then we're adding problems to that home. And if we're adding problems, we're moving our programs backward because we're moving those kids backwards and we're moving those families backwards. And when it comes time for them to think about, eh, it's time to go back to school. Do I want to do band? Do I want to do choir? Do I want to do orchestra? They're going to think, no, it just wasn't, it just wasn't fun. I didn't learn anything. It was just homework. You know, and the thing I talked about in my last webinar, that in the good times, when we're getting trophies and we're competitions and at concerts, when we're wearing our tuxedos, we love to go, our group is a family. Well, now the times aren't so good. Are we really a family? Or are we just teachers sending home homework? Are we just teachers creating assignments? Are we providing value to the home? Are we making Christy, my neighbor, my gal pal, are we making her life better or are we making her life worse? What is the purpose of what we're doing? So as we go through that, I want to give you some frameworks of understanding about what purpose means. Number one, don't engage in pandemic theater. 
So for those of you who travel a lot, and most of you don't, there's, uh, there's a term out there called security theater. The Government Accountability Office, the GAO, uh, recently ran a test um, in which they tried to sneak weapons through TSA a hundred different times. And on 93% of those times, they got the weapon through security. Now that is not an indictment against the wonderful workers who are keeping us safe. It's an indictment against the systemic problems that are inherent with trying to guard a virtually unguardable uh, industry. And so the, the, the coin that was phrased at that moment was, if we're not, we're putting on a big show, lots of people in blue shirts and lots of money and lots of, of systems and lots of machinery, but it's nothing more than a show because it's not doing anything. And it was the coin that was phrased was, it's nothing more than um, security theater. That what you're seeing is it's a show, but it's not doing anything. We don't want to engage in pandemic theater. Everybody's got an idea. Everybody's got a webinar. Everybody's got a tip. Everybody's got a trick. And those are all incredible things and amazing tools. But don't do something just to do something. Don't give out an assignment just to have an assignment. Don't engage with the kids to do an activity, just to do an activity, that it has to have real purpose, it has to have real value, and it has to do something that's going to mean something to your kids. Assignments must have real value, real purpose, and have all obstacles removed. If you deliver an assignment that not only doesn't have a real purpose, doesn't have real value, but well, you have to download this piece of software and use this type of iPad and make sure that you have this microphone and make sure, then you haven't added value to the house, you've added obstacles to the house. You haven't made their life better, you've made their life worse. One of my favorite ones is, a musical one is I talked to my friend, um, Mike Gary, shout out to Mike Gary down in uh, uh, Katy, Texas at Taylor High School. He's doing all his auditions for um, his students for next year's ensembles. And I thought that has real purpose and that has real value. That makes sense to me. Um, the thing is, what is your ultimate goal? Are you trying to grow your ensemble? Are you trying to grow your community? Are you trying to get them better musically? Are you trying to get them better personally? Are you trying to advance a specific skill set? Are you trying to advance a sense of community? Sit down and be able to write what is your purpose, not just for the entire curricula that you're delivering, but for each and every unit that you send out, for each and every assignment. You need to be able to say, here's the assignment, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is the ultimate goal. But in the end, you have to know that the, it provides real value, real purpose in real time. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're just creating real problems for your families. And then last but not least, as you build this, you want to think about um, what are my students going to remember in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years? They're going to remember this COVID time. They're going to remember this pandemic moment. They're going to remember this as their Challenger space shuttle, their Kennedy assassination, their Richard Nixon stepping down, their 9-11, their 2008. They're going to remember this moment and they're going to think back to you and they're going to remember something about you. What will they remember? Will they remember that you cared? Will they remember that you communicated? Will they remember that you provided real value? Will they remember that you, you demonstrated that you were there in good times and bad? Or will they remember that you gave them 10 written assignments um, about the history of rock and roll? Will they remember that you made them log in every day and practice a chromatic scale? And there are places for those things because that's real value, real purpose and real time, but not all the time not with every assignment. So really take a step back and think about what is my purpose? And to be honest with you, you should be able to write a one sentence statement right now. My sentence for the Tempe High School Band is to further the band community and develop personal skills that will make us successful when we return. My purpose of the Marcos Deniza online curriculum is to develop the Diff the individual rehearsal practice skill sets that will allow us to accelerate faster upon their return. My purpose is that you will develop the musical, personal, and visual, you can practice marching at home, skill sets that will allow my students to move faster upon their return. Whatever that is, if you can't say it in one sentence, I would say you don't know what your purpose is. And if you don't know what your purpose is, you're not ready to prepare to teach. And that's what's next. We have to prepare to teach. 
you, you have to lesson plan. And yes, lesson plans will go a thousand different ways, but you have to be prepared for them. And we're going to show you how to do this in really simple, easy steps. And I want to do it in a really fun way because I like being fun. So when we think about preparation, what we're talking is about delivering online instruction. We're talking about delivering something to the student's door that, um, that they can then take with simple, easy, digestible instructions and prepare them, complete them, and be successful and feel good. And so I started thinking about this, and it really, the model that, that we built with Leadership University is built uh, uh, very similar to uh, a subscription meal model. That, that's what we're talking about, meal to go. You know, we're, we're talking about a fresh and easy. We're talking about all those things where they deliver the stuff to your door, every ingredient you need, instructions how to do it, the time limit it takes, the number of people it takes, the people it will feed, and a picture of the final product delivered to your door. It's literally idiot proofed. Saxophone players will be able to complete this assignment. That's the mentality that you wanna have. I'm gonna give you everything you need to be successful in all the instructions. So we're gonna look at this like it's a subscription meal program. And if you have some food out, that's fantastic. And by the way, you can pair the meal with music. Um, I challenged a group in my first webinar. Um, one of your homework assignments for kids could be uh, pair a meal with music. Uh, take OHO Reads La Fiesta Mexicana and make fajitas and use that as one of your assignments. Um, but so you want to think about this. So number one, you want to have a short-term and long-term meal plan. So you don't want to just think about, well, it's fajitas tonight. You need to think about long-term. We're going to do Mexican week one. We're going to do Chinese week two. We're going to do Italian week three. We're going to do American comfort food week four. We're going to do um, Spanish tapas week five. We're going to do Australian, whatever it is. You want a short-term plan. What am I going to teach this week? But you also want to think in the long-term arc and make sure that it's sustainable. Now hear that word when I say it's sustainable because we're going to come back to it in just about two minutes. Number two, um, don't do it every day. I don't want a meal kit every day. That gets overwhelming and it takes the fun out of it. That you want to, you want to vary what you do. And what we're doing at Leadership University is the, the arc that we've built is we do curricula on Monday, curricula on Wednesday, and an activity on Friday so that it's instructional, instructional, fun game. Instructional, instructional, fun game, three times a week. We, um, we design every unit so it's you can layer it and it can be as, as short as three minutes or as long as 30 minutes. It's up to you what elements you want. Um, you can choose your ingredients. You want just the video, do you want just the PDF, you want just the chat board, whatever it is. But you wanna include all the ingredients when you send it home. Here's what you need, here's how you need to do it. I've attached the PDF, I've made a video of instructions, I've given you the URL, I've everything they need. You wanna give them a prescribed time limit. This activity will take seven minutes if you're successful. This activity should take no more than three minutes. I, you know, I've got young kids and if I open up a meal kit and my kids go, I'm hungry dad, and I open it up, it says, this will take 75 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, I wish I would've known that before I ordered it. I, need, I gotta have something ready in 12 minutes or he's gonna lose his mind. Um, you need to know how many people it will feed. Oh God, I have a family of four. It says feed family of two. How many people will it take to complete this task? And don't involve the parents unless it's fun. Don't add more to their plate unless it's fun. Then you want to engage them. We'll talk about that. Um, you want to vary the meals and vary the ingredients. So maybe it's play your horn on Monday, send a video. Maybe it's um, write an essay on Tuesday. Maybe on Friday, it's watch a um, a video of John Rutter conducting or watch a DCI video or go outside and march and send me a video or create this term, this project for your neighbor. The point is it's got to be varied. It's got to be mixed up, whatever your instructional elements are. And if you come up with it systemically, it'll make you feel better. If I know I'm going to do a musical lesson Monday, I know I'm going to do a visual lesson on Wednesday, and I'm going to do a fun activity Friday. Gosh, I can come up with that. A musical lesson. Uh, let's do definition of terms Monday. And then uh, two weeks, a week from now on Monday, we'll do uh, dynamics. I'm just making this up in real time. A week from now, we'll do um, uh, parts of your instrument lesson. A week, from, And those are all things that are important that I wouldn't have taught in class. I'm adding value to the ensemble. I'm adding value to the student. I'm adding value to that child's life in a short, digestible, um, way, but also I'm building a system that I can sustain. I need just one musical lesson a week. Oh, I can do that. I need one personal development lesson a week. Well, I can do that. There's Scott Lang stuff. There's Tim stuff. There's Stephen Covey stuff. There's all sorts of stuff. There's your own stuff. And then one fun game to play on Friday. Okay, I can do this. 
I can do this. Um, a picture of what it's in, in the look like. You always want to tell them at the end, I'm excited. I want you to be successful. When you submit, you sh it should look like this. I should have one PDF. I should have a video of you playing. I should have proof that you watch. I, whatever it is that shows success. Um, you want to make it fun and adventurous. End it with, and tell me a joke when you send it to me. Um, and uh, first one send it gets a prize. We're going to talk about that. And you want to mix up your musical lessons and your non-musical lessons. No one wants to have spaghetti five days a week. No one wants to have spaghetti three days a week, except for my nine-year-old who wants to eat, you know, a bean burrito every day for every meal. But that's another problem for me. Mix it all up. So now you've created that framework. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in theory, you can do what you want. Musical, personal activity. I know it's going to be less than 15 minutes. I know that I'm going to deliver everything they need. I know I'm not going to involve the parents. Um, and I know I'm going to do it through Remind, or I'm going to do it through Band, or I'm going to do it through my email system, or I'm going to do it through uh, the Band website. Now I can take a breath. All right, I have a system. It's only three things a week. I can do that. I know what my system is, musical, personal, activity. I know I already have the email system. I already have the band. Uh, the kids are already signed up for it. If they're not, you should sign them up. It's pretty impressive. You can do all this, by the way, in real time in this app. Um, I can do this. Now I just need to think about what is my purpose? My purpose is to make them a better musician. My purpose is to make them a better person. And my purpose is to distract them from these dark times. Okay, I got this. I can do this. I have a purpose. I have a plan. I can do this. So once we've done that, you want to think about it in this way. You want to decrescendo your instructional design. And I mean this sincerely. This is the instructional roadmap for the next seven weeks. So the reason I do that is kids, you don't ever want to do anything that's going to work against you. You don't ever want to do anything that's going to make a kid go, gosh, I, I hate band. This is a drudge. This is a drag. I'm so frustrated with choir. I don't want to do it next year. The beginning is when the kids will be the most excited. There's no one more excited than at band camp. It's the beginning, the first day of choir, the first day of, of symphony orchestra. You know, I get calls all the time and say, oh, we want you to come out to band camp and fire up the kids. And I always say the same thing. A golden retriever could fire up the kids at band camp. That doesn't take any skill. They're already fired up they're going to be fired up at the first assignment that you send. So you want that first assignment to be your strongest assignment, the most fun. It can be the larger assignment. It can take 30 minutes instead of five. It can, it can be a little more um, in, in, in instructive. It can be a little more interactive. It can be a little deeper. Um, and the reason why is the kids are going to be more excited. This is when, if you have something big you want to do, um, you know, you're seeing some stuff out there, uh, lots of assignments. And, you know, one of the things that I see, and, and this is the practical me, and I'm, I, try and be, I try and be a dreamer. I really try. Um, but I also try and be practical. Um, the virtual ensembles that I'm seeing are just, they're incredible. You know, and, and uh, what people are doing, it's amazing. But I also know the back end of that is, okay, now I got to reach out to 95 kids. They got to submit a video. I got to align them. I got to audio. I got to blend. I gotta, I've got 100 hours of work. I can't sustain that for nine weeks. So I'm going to put that on the front end of this assignment, of this sequence, because I know I can do that now and the kids will commit. But what happens if I put that on May 18th and only five of my 100 kids send in a video? Now I've done some damage because I can't put it out. I look like a fool and everyone in band knows that they ignored me. I got ignored. I've done damage to my program by doing that on May 18th. I'm not saying it will damage your program, but I'm saying you have to think that way. Instructional design matters. Start with the largest thing first. First things first. The next two weeks, you can bite off some bigger things. The last two weeks in April, you've got to scale it down. You've got to say, listen, I know that you're, you're busy right now. And I know that you're going a little stir crazy. Maybe the game's going to be a little funner. Maybe the assignments are going to be a little shorter. Maybe the videos will be a little less intensive. Maybe the PDF is going to ask three questions instead of nine. That you want to start to scale it back. And, and I'm not just saying it's because of instructional design. I will tell you, 
I would tell my kids at the start of the fourth quarter, I am going to ride you like there's no tomorrow. You are going to hate me. And I would do, so I would do concert band boot camp in the beginning of April. And I would make them come before school. I had them during class. I'd make them come after school. They had to fill out intensive practice records for two weeks. And then I would back way back. I'd say, seniors, I know senior ditch day's coming. Take it. You're good. Listen, I know that the junior research paper is coming up. And these are real things that I, I did with kids. I'm going to scale back. No practicing for the next two weeks because you, we are ready to go. We're fine tuning. We're doing stuff in class and ensemble, balance and blend. But I'm not asking for anything else because you are buried, juniors. Seniors, you have checked out. So I'm going to ask less of you at this point in time. We're still learning, we're still growing, but I front loaded the process so that I could pull the throttle off just a little bit during the last two weeks in April. And then in May, after the concert was done, after state contest was done, minimal time and effort. I would tell the kids, do not, if I see a horn go home, I may take it from you, relax. And what we did is we sight read every day for the last three weeks of class. Uh, any piece that the students needed to play, should play in their career, but didn't. You know, I never had the, the oboe player to do, let's say, October. So we'd read October. I, I didn't have the woodwinds to pull off Candide, but they should know Candide. So we would sight read Candide for two or three days. Uh, you know, we would do all of the host, both suites. We would do every Granger work I could find. We could do Sousa. It, all they had to do was show up and put the horns up to their face. And I wasn't intense. It was fun. Minimal effort, minimal time, still learning, being exposed to great literature that they had not been exposed to. Um, but just pulling back the throttle so that they could be mentally healthy, they could be emotionally healthy, and they could be musically healthy. First two weeks, you can go big. The two, last two weeks in May, you've got to pull back. And the first two weeks in May, I'm sorry, the last two weeks in April, first two weeks in May and the last week, you have got to make it fun and engaging so that the first thing they remember is the last thing they did. Something fun that showed them that you cared. This is your art. Now remember, you know what your purpose is. Make them better musicians, make them better people and show them I care and build a community. We know what the instructional process is going to look like. We're going to deliver a meal kit Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Instructional, musical, instructional, personal, and activity that's communal building. No more than 15 minutes. Don't involve the parents. And I'm going to use the delivery mechanisms that I have, my website, my band app, my email system. I'm going to go big. I'm going to go medium. I'm going to go easy. Are you feeling better? Take a deep breath. We got this. We got this. Again, look at me. I'm smiling. This should be fun. And if it's not fun, we're doing it wrong. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. You know, and again, when I say to the kids, if you're not giggling when you're doing this, you are not doing this correctly. You should giggle. You should giggle. And if you need inspiration, order an online meal packet. I've never ordered one, but I bought one at the store and I had so much fun with my kids doing it. Um, both my boys wanted to cook with me. Well, my older one, not so much. My younger one thought it was awesomeness. And uh, I'm sure my wife thought it was great because she didn't have to cook and I didn't screw up a meal, which I can do. Take a deep breath. You got this. You absolutely, absolutely got this. Not sure why I just did that, so let me fix it. There we go. Keep in mind, you can swim up steam, but it takes more effort and longer to get to your destination. Swim with your kids. This is the arc that they want to move in. This is the arc that we will move in. Okay, now we got to create the content. We get to make the meal, dinner. This is fun. This is fun. And remember, there's cooking and there's baking. Cooking is, let's be artistic. A little dash of this, throw this, fire, that's me. Baking is very exact science, prescribing specific amounts of specific things because it's going to create a chemical reaction in the stove. We got to do a little bit of both. You need a little bit of creativity to come up with this, but then you need to be very specific. This is the URL. This is what I want you to do step by step by step. This is how I want you to do it. So let's create some. Okay. Designing your immune set, two elements in a week, one, two instructional, one, um, one uh, um, uh, activity. Use video, 
use audio, use reading, use writing, use practicing, but vary up the components. Don't do writing, writing, activity, writing, writing, activity. You've got to mix it up a little bit. You got to show a video and then writing, then visit a URL and then talk to a friend and tell, tell me what you talked about and then watch this YouTube video. Watch it. You've got to mix it up. No one wants to eat Mexican food seven days a week, except for me, which I really do, but you have to understand that. But keeping your, you're varying your instructional elements, but keeping your schedule consistent and making Friday dessert day. You know, make it fun, make it light, make it activity so that remember the first thing that they remember is the last thing they did. At the end of every week, they, they remember, I like this instructional stuff. It's been fun. They don't remember the musical thing Monday. What they remember is the fun thing that they did Friday. So now that you know what you're creating, we got to talk about plate presentation. Musical, personal, activity. I want to make my kids better musicians. I want to make my kids uh, better people. And I want to have them remember good times during these dark days and feel like they're a part of the community. I'm going to deliver Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to vary up my instructional processes, videos, essays, physical activity. I'm going to give them all the ingredients in a creative way. It's going to be completed in 15 minutes or less. We're going to day crescendo it over a seven week period. And we're going to provide them with ways and instructions and proof that we know that they can be successful. Now we got to give it to them. And folks, plate presentation is part of the game. Like that's half the fun, the art of it. Be like, ooh, and, and when I cook and I don't cook often, a plate presentation is like my jam. I try and be super like cool about it. It never works. It just, I'm not good at it, but I really fancy myself as being good at it, but I'm really not. So let's talk about what you present to the students. Um, number one, when you present it, it has to have little burden on the family. Now that doesn't mean you don't involve the family, but it has less burden and provides value. So have the assignments benefit the family. So when I cook, it's got to benefit the family. So, you know, um, when you do an assignment of personal growth activity, um, you know, uh, what do you feel about communication in a leadership way? That's your Wednesday thing, communication. And then, and then your homework assignment is talk about it at the dinner table. Play, uh, um, play a game at the dinner table of would you rather. Um, have a discussion with how is band made your life better? How has choir made your life better? How is singing and playing an orchestra changed your life? Is music a foreign language? Debate it. You know, that you can do these things. The activity and uh, one of the challenges of our online curricula, um, and it's not only was yesterday, Friday or today, went out today, and but I think four weeks from now is um, your, the activity is do something to make a family member's life better. Cook dinner tonight show gratitude to a family member. You know, that a parent at the end of that is gonna go, oh my God, I'm so glad my teacher thought that. My teacher, my band director, my son's band director cares about my family. He says they're a family, but they really are. And when you're asking them to give up every morning and every night for rehearsal and Friday nights and every weekend in the fall, then you gotta give something back in the spring. You gotta give them something that they can do with their child that helps their child become a better person because in the end, that's all any parent cares about. It's not band, it's not choir, it's not orchestra. They care about their kid and their kid cares about band, choir and orchestra. So provide things the whole family can do. Even the five-year-old can do around um, the dinner table and have fun. Uh, that can be your assignment for that day. You can pair sibling up with sibling, have a debate, parents against kids. You can have uh, one sibling interview another sibling. You can do all sorts of things and, and keep things happy and, 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 my, you know, and simple, that they're executable. Think when you make your meal kits, think Gordon Ramsay, not the way he swears and yells at people, although it's very entertaining, um, not Julia Child. You know, we're not doing the orange. We're making fajitas. You know, we're not doing a fringe pastry, you know, we're making cereal and keep it that simple because it will, it will make it better because it will make them more successful. And when at the end, when they serve dinner to their family, look what I learned today, mom, and we're supposed to talk about the dinner table. Um, it's going to add value to the family. It's going to add value to the child, which will in turn add value to your program. 
and an opportunity to grow your program when people see and talk about, well, God, you know, my son's math teacher sent home 17 pages of homework. My son's band teacher sent home a game for the family to play. Well, which, which do you think that parent's gonna remember? Which do you think the child's gonna remember? Think Gordon Ramsay, don't think Julia Child. Now, some best practices. These are general online best practices. Number one, before you deliver instruction, lower fear. Uh, fear is more important than knowledge. You know, if, if I'm scared of something, it doesn't matter what I know. You know, if you ask someone who's scared of flying and they're terrified on the plane and I meet them all the time, I can give them all the information on planes never crash and statistically yours, it's way worse to be in a car and blah, blah, blah. They don't care. They're scared. They don't hear the information because they're scared. You know, you can tell me how safe, uh, the, you know, a tall building is. But when I get up there and I look out the window, um, I, it makes me a little bit nervous. And I don't care what you tell me. And I know steel is really strong in engineers. And I, I know all these things, but uh. so you want to lower fear. Guys, no matter what, you're going to make an ensemble. Guys, no matter how you play, you're, you're going you're gonna to get an A. Guys, I know you're scared, but we're going to have band next year. Seniors, I know you're upset, but we're going to play pomp and circumstance for you. Even if you walk across the living room, we will have pomp and circumstance for you. Guys, we're going to hand out the SUSE Award, the Orchestra Member of the Year Award, the Outstanding Soloist for Choir. Lower the fears before you start to teach the lesson. Um, two, communicate uh, the lessons to all your stakeholders. Parents, the child, section leaders for reinforcement, your department chair, and your administrators. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, my son doesn't, he's actually, you know, pretty good. My older son at reading everything, just doing it. My younger son, I get an email, my wife gets an email, we cross communicate to make sure we got it. We have my son, my nine-year-old son read it. Then communicate, communicate, communicate. We get a letter from the administrator. You are the face of the school. You know, for most people, the band director, the choir director, the orchestra director, I get more emails from you than the principal. I get more emails from you than, the, than any other teacher. I see you more than any administrator. You are the face of the school. Act like it. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Make sure that your, your lessons require no more than 50 minutes. If they require more than 50 minutes, break them up. Because I can tell you for a fact, and I can use Vimeo stats, I can use online stats, I can use YouTube stats. People stop watching after 13 minutes. It's over. You can, you can make a longer video. Watch this one. You know, my son, um, my son, uh, you know, as, as some of his teachers like, watch this one hour video on World War II. You know, he's like skimming through it. Well, that doesn't look like, yep, there's no test question. Nope, he, he's done in 15 minutes. And I, maybe I should be a better parent, but that's the reality. And I can tell you, I can use Vimeo YouTube stats that prove that your students are operating that way. So don't swim upstream, swim downstream. Don't send them two hour videos. Don't do it. They're not going to do it. And it's just going to make them angry at you. And an angry student is a student that doesn't sign up for your class next year. Don't swim upstream. Uh, use existing infrastructure and technology. Um, don't, you know, it, there's a lot of amazing programs out there. And I tried to think about it and, and is, okay, my students left for spring break. This is a real example in Chandler. My students left for spring break, not knowing they weren't coming back. They didn't take their instruments. They don't have their music. And I don't have them already set up in X software. What are the chances I can get them new music, get them all their um, instruments? I mean, everyone, not just most, everyone. Teach them a new software platform and then assign them things. It's not real good. It's not real good that that's going to happen. Use what you have. It doesn't mean it's the best. And then switch to something better next year now that you know you're going to have greater needs. Because this is going to be a real scenario moving forward. Um, focus on the kid who's not the musician. Think about the kid who doesn't love orchestra, the kid who's not your best singer. Um, the kid who's first chair, I'll say he's gonna do everything you ask, so don't worry about him. Don't worry about her. Don't worry about your top one ensemble. Worry about your freshman ensemble. Don't worry about your best kid. Think about your worst kid as you create this. If you can design instruction for your, your kid that struggles, then you know everyone's gonna be successful. You know that everyone's gonna, gonna do what they need to do. The kid who's the all-state player, who's first chair and practices every day, they're gonna be fine. Don't worry about them. They're fine. Um, connect students to students. Uh, you know, every, it doesn't have to be turning your assignments to me every day. It can be turning your assignment to your section leaders on Mondays. I'll check Wednesdays 
and uh, the drum majors will check Fridays. You know, so that, hey, you're not adding a burden on yourself, but you're connecting kids. Uh, I have a flag football team that I coach my son, both my sons, uh, and they're good. They're real good. Um, uh, I've had the same group together for nine years. We've played almost 400 games, and my younger team I've had together four years. My point is, we're doing an online Madden football tournament right now because they just, they need to be together. They miss their friends. And if I can get them on a headset talking to one another and competing again and thinking about football and remembering that we're a team, then that's what I'm going to do. They don't need to be building a skill. They need to be building a team. Connect kids and use your influencers and carrots to increase participation. We're going to talk about that in two seconds. Section leaders, post your video for everyone to see. Section leaders, check in with your sections. Seniors, be sure to buddy up with all the freshmen. Use influencers and incentives um, to get kids. Oh my goodness, you know, the, oh, I, oh, the senior's gonna check in on me, I better do that assignment. Oh, ooh, my, I, I gotta post it publicly, I better make sure I do a good job. And then celebrate in a public way. You know, uh, maybe this is a little devious, but this is my favorite thing to do. If I had homework due, practice records due, uh, um, a tour payment due, a parent participation slip signed in, this is my favorite thing to do. I, I'm sorry if it's devious, but I, I did all the time. I'd say in class, um, hey, thanks for everyone who turned in their uh, parent slips. Uh, I think out of the 250 kids, I think I've got all but three. So if, if you're one of the three, make sure you get them in, please. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Well, the thing was, I was missing 45 and I was steamed inside. But every kid of the 45 that didn't turn thought, oh my God, uh, oh my God, everyone's done it but me. I guarantee I had 45 in within an hour. Hey, practice records and thanks to everyone. I think I had everyone but two. I forget, I think it's two or three. Make sure you get those in. I don't want you to do bad. Now every kid's like, oh my God, I, I didn't think anybody was doing it. And now it's reverse peer pressure. I want to be a part of the crowd and the crowd's doing the right thing. I better choose the right thing. I want to be part of the crowd, the crowd's doing the homework, I better do the homework. And if you post successes in very public ways, I'm going to post the best video on the website. Not only am I competitive and I want the best video, so I'm going to do a really good job, but now I've got videos and now everyone who didn't do a video is like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Use influencers and carrots to increase participation and do success in celebrate ways, which is this, celebrate. Now, you want to remember the dessert, the celebration. You know, uh, these are kids. You're not gonna get your dessert if you don't eat your broccoli. If you don't finish your plate, you're not getting pie. Don't forget, we made brownies. Make sure to eat your dinner, eat it up, all your chicken if you want. Well, you didn't finish your, your main course, then you're not gonna get dessert. Use the dessert, use fun stuff and presentation and what comes last to incentivize. So here's some different things that you can do. And these are just random ideas uh, that you can use as incentives, carrots, if you will. Um, ways that you can increase participation. Uh, it's funny because we've done this and here's a little secret. You know, uh, if we ask for something to be part of the music, we'll get, you know, X rate. If we say there's a $10 Amazon gift card, to the winner, to the first five. To, we will get 600 responses in 10 minutes. And we said to the first five, it only cost us 50 bucks. Where if we just said, please submit, we'd get three responses. So we went from three to 500 and it cost us 50 bucks. Think about incentives and they can be free. They don't need to cost money. They can be, uh, you know, uh, letterman points. They can be bumper stickers. They can be extra t-shirts. They can be public recognition. They can be their name on a website and gamify it. Here's different ways you can get kids to participate. First person to turn it in, best answer, worst answer, funniest answer, first person to post on a chat board, uh, social sharing, first section to complete the task together, first uh, one freshman band takes on top band, um, uh, concert orchestra takes on symphony orchestra, acapella takes on chamber choir, um, uh, boys against girls, um, seniors against freshmen, uh, we're going to post on social media, the winner. The point is, on the left side, you see incentives. On the right side, you see ways to gamify it. And I don't like to read to people, so you can print out the slide deck at jointsll.com. But what you're really thinking is this. I want to use positive peer pressure to increase participation. 
I want to gamify it, not gradeify it. If you gamify and not gradeify, then you gratify. If you gamify and not gradeify, then you gratify and they participate and then tie it to a real need, a real benefit. You're going to be better as a person. You're going to be better for your parents. You're going to know more about your instrument. This is your audition for wind ensemble. So when you do that, you add value to them. You add value to the family. And when you add value, you add value for you into their lives. So just to remember, it's as easy as one, two, three. What's your purpose? Better people, better musicians, create a sense of community and help them forget. What is my preparation? I have a structure, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, music, leadership, um, activity. It's gonna be delivered in 15 minute bits. I'm gonna vary what I deliver, which is instructional, you know, uh, written, audio, visual, YouTube, physical. I'm going to day crescendo the instruction first two weeks, mid two weeks, last two weeks. I'm going to use my best practices for delivery in infrastructure that's readily available. I'm going to utilize um, influencers and peers to increase participation. Then I'm going to celebrate in a very public light way, which um, incentivizes kids to participate and feel successful. I'm gonna focus on the non-musicians because as they're successful, we know the musicians will be successful. And then at the end, I'm gonna congratulate and celebrate. This is an opportunity not to survive. This is an opportunity to thrive. This is not an opportunity to stem from getting worse. This is an opportunity to get better. We're always complaining, I never have enough time. I'm always preparing for the next concert or contest. Well, now you're not. So now what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Don't do something just to do something. That's surviving. Do something to make your people better. Do something to make your ensemble better. That's thriving. Pandemic theater is a farce. And not only doesn't do any good, it will hurt you. Strong instructional design will help you. Will help you. Last but not least, if you're still lost, check out our university, uh, Leadership University. Uh, you can go to joinsll.com. We're actually doing this in real time. We have 3,100, 3,100 schools involved and almost a half a million kids being impacted. When you go there, you'll get a lesson starting in, on Sunday, maybe even today, but Sunday lesson five. But in that link, um, at the bottom, it'll say, would you like to use a Google Classroom? You can actually take it into a Google Classroom and the kids can interact with you. But there'll also be a link at the very bottom that says, if you'd like to see previous lessons, click here so you can play catch up or use lessons and not use lessons. Um, we want to make sure that we give you everything you need to be a COVID hero and not a COVID zero. And all the lessons that we're teaching today, we learned in building Leadership University. Uh, I'll be taking questions uh, when we come online. But if you are not a member of our community, go to bepartofthemusic.org and join this movement. Um, you can reach out to me at scott at scottlang.net. I'm on Twitter at the more you give. Um, we've had, believe it or not, almost 5,000 educators join our movement just in the last month. Uh, we provide webinars and content every week and we'll continue to do this um, moving forward to provide value to you to make your lives easier and make your students better. Um, I'll be taking questions in a minute on the band app. Um, it'll take me a minute to log out of the webinar and drop into the band app. This will all be available for viewing um, in the band app for the next 30 days. And with that close, I want to thank our friends at the band app. Uh, they not only uh, stepped up and, and solved a problem for us um, in terms of our meeting space and our capacity and our ability to host and interactivity, but they're also hosting three rooms right now, the band director group, which you're in right now. We have a COVID curricula group, which we have 500 directors in. So if you're using our leadership university, you want to be a part of that group, um, COVID curricula. And then we have a COVID curriculum 
curricula student group, which your students can jump on and be a part of. But the band app um, has been uh, incredibly generous to be a part of the music and um, is being incredibly generous for you. It's 100% free and it is ridiculously good. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our webinar. We will be sending, if you RSVP through, um, uh, through me, uh, a certificate tomorrow um, that uh, shows that you are here in professional development. I will be um, stopping uh, the share right now and jumping onto the band app and communicating with you. Um, but thank you. Let me end with thank you for doing everything that you do for kids and know that I'm here and please reach out to me using the, the email address and my cell phone number is 480-577-5264. That's four, I held up three. I'm a drummer. 480-577-5264, scott at scottlang.net, Twitter at the more you give, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash scottlangleadership. Thank you for coming today. Be safe, be healthy, and use this time to be a better teacher and make better kids because that's what we do. Take care, everyone. Good luck. Uh, and we'll be jumping on to the band app taking questions. If you have any feedback, feel free to share with me using the contact information below. Bye, everyone.